All right, in this video, I'm gonna cover the difference between AC and DC coupling of the input probes. Uh, so you can see I have channel one turned on and what I'm referring to is over here, this is the soft button. There's DC, AC and ground coupling. So one of the things that you wanna keep in mind is that electrical signals can have one of two components or both. Uh, those components being AC and the other components being DC. That's going to be uh, an alternating voltage signal or uh, a constant steady state voltage. Now, there can be different combinations. It can be, for example, you can have a purely alternating sine wave, which you know, think of like the, the house current. Now, that's going to be something that you can see on channel one here, the yellow channel. It's going to be centered around zero volts. It's going to be uh, symmetrical. So you're going to have uh, like your peak to peak voltage. Voltage here is 4.08 volts. And it's going to be half on the t uh, positive and half negative. They're also going to have uh, DC, which is nice, steady, linear, constant voltage. Uh, you think of uh, something like a linear voltage regulator, like uh, the seven, classic 7805 will have a nice, steady, uh, a straight line of 5 volts. Uh, you can also have AC, so you have primarily AC with a, a bit of a DC offset. You can think of amplifiers, or like I'm going to show here in just a minute, the uh, uh, clamping circuit. So you can see the, let me get that off. You can see the output voltage of the clamping circuit is has a DC offset voltage to it. Uh, but then you can also have a, a steady state DC with a small AC ripple voltage riding on top of it. You think of something like a switching voltage regulator or the ripple voltage off a capacitor on the output stage of a full wave bridge rectifier. Now in this example, you can see I've got a, just a really simple clamping circuit. So I've got my function generator connected to the terminals here. Uh, and it's just going through the breadboard. It's relatively low frequency, so it's, this isn't gonna cause a problem. Uh, so I've got the positive side of the voltage source on this side of the capacitor. And we've got the uh, clamping diode, this is just a 4148, and the cathode is, is uh, pointing to ground. This isn't going to be a tutorial on how the clamping circuit works, but essentially the, the, it uh, clamps the output to zero volts, and depending on how the uh, diode is biased, it'll either push the AC signal on the positive side of the zero voltage, so you'll have basically a fluctuating D, positive DC signal, uh, or it'll push it to the negative side of zero volts. So you have a negative uh, alternating DC voltage. All right, to get to the coupling menu, all you have to do is press the channel one menu selection. Now the uh, soft, this brings up the soft menu. So the coupling selection is going to be over on the, this side with this oscilloscope. Now what coupling refers to is what of the two components of the electrical signal do you want to measure? Now, when you're set to DC, it will measure both the AC and the DC. So it won't filter out any of the DC offset. Now, if we're on AC, it will filter out the DC. And all we'll be left with is the actual changing voltage signal. So the input voltage right now is coming from the function generator. Now, I don't have any DC offset, so there should be no difference between if I press the DC or AC coupling. So we're on DC right now. If I press this button again, It'll go to AC, and then you see that there's, the signal doesn't change. And if I go to if I press the, the ground, then it just goes to flat. So the reason you would use this ground has because uh, you want to know where on your screen your zero or your, your ground references or your zero voltage references. Uh, and then once you turn it back on, you can know that this is actually zero volts. This is your positive voltage, and this is your negative voltage. Now if I switch over to channel two. So channel two is the output of the clamping circuit. So this is on uh, between the capacitor and the diode. So right now I am measuring both the DC and the AC components of the signal. So this is the, the blue channel. Let me just get that off. And you can see that the, this is lower, but you can uh, see by the labels that they're actually at the same reference point. So that they're both, this is zero voltage. Let me bring that back up. So if I switch it to AC, what will happen is that you'll see the waveform move up because I'm fil filtering out the DC voltage. Now there, it just tell, uh, this just confirms that your channel one and channel two are identical. 
which is what you want out of a clamping circuit. All it needs to do, all it should do is either uh, push the signal the negative or positive. Uh, it's going to be clamped to the zero voltage. Now, when you use DC versus AC coupling, all it has to do with what you're measuring. If the, me if the signal you're measuring is riding a DC voltage, and that's important to your operation, then you'll probably want to measure both the DC and the AC comp components of the signal, which means it needs to be on DC coupling. Now, there'll be certain times, we'll see in an example in a second, where we, let's say we're measuring a, a primarily a DC steady state voltage, but we want to see the small ripple voltage. So then we'll actually use the AC coupling. Right, here I've built a simple full wave bridge rectifier. So we've got the AC voltage uh, inputs in the top and bottom, then the DC voltage output uh, across the resistor and the capacitor. So we've got the four diodes that are actually doing the rectification. They're doing the full wave rectification. So you've basically got like the two humps as opposed to the half wave, which you got a hump and then flat, hump, flat. This is a 100 microfarad capacitor, and this is just a 1K. I just chose those arbitrarily to give me a halfway decent amount of ripple voltage that we'll see. And so the circuit schematic is, uh, is fairly straightforward. So this is the, the two inputs for the AC, and we have this is the ground output and the positive voltage for the DC output. This is the, capa this is the output capacitor, and this is the load resistor. Yes, yeah, so this is 1K, and this is 100 microfarads. Right, so if we look over here at the oscilloscope, I've got channel one is measuring the output voltage. I have it set to DC voltage. So I want to know what the DC level output is. And I also want to be able to measure the, or I also want to be able to see the AC waveform of the ripple voltage. Now, one of the challenges is that in this kind of circuit, you want to be able to measure how much ripple voltage. So you can go with the cursors and you can try to measure the delta v but that's you know that's not exactly going to give you a, a high level of precision so one of the things one of the ways so let's just turn those cursors off so you can try to make this a little bit larger so I've, i'm at five volts per division maybe i can maybe i can make that two volts per division and then i can bring this down so i can measure it so now I have a little bit more information. I can I can take the cursors and get a little bit more precise. So now before it was one volt measured, now it's 640 millivolts. So it's a little bit more accurate, but still this isn't even a, a full division. So now we can try to increase that again, go to one volt per division. Now the, you know, the, the level is off the scale. I can try to bring that down all the way, and since it's a, a basically an eight volt DC, uh, I can't I can't break it down anymore. So this is where using and we just uh, recenter this and change that to five. So this would be a good case in where you don't want the coupling to be both DC and AC. So in this case, since I want to measure the amount of ripple voltage on that. I want just the AC. So I want to filter out the DC level. And you can see that brings it down to, uh, there is no DC offset. So now I can adjust the volts per division. So there's two volts per division, one volt per division, 500 millivolts. So I also want to change the scale a little bit. I change my trigger level so it's actually triggering. And we'll do it right about there. Now, so now we're at 200 millivolts per division and four milliseconds. So change that so it's nice in the center. So now I can take my cursors, I can use the multi-purpose knobs, and I can get a far more precise and far more accurate measurement of the amount of ripple voltage. So in the first instance, the voltage difference from cursor A to cursor B was one volt. Now it wasn't nearly as precise. Now we're getting a lot more precise measurements and we're actually just a little bit more than half of that. So by increasing, uh, by filtering out the DC and keeping the, the waveform centered around zero, I can change my uh, vertical scale to a smaller value. So then I can actually measure much more accurately. So there is only one little gotcha about the D 
DC and AC coupling. This has to do with low frequencies. So right now I've got a 250 hertz square wave. Uh, so the input is channel one and the output, this is the clamping circuit, this is channel two. So this just has a little bit of a DC offset. So we can see channel one is set at DC. So if I change it to AC, again, there's uh, not much. As we get into lower frequencies, we'll see that this is interpreted as a constant steady state voltage that if we're in AC coupling, it will distort the waveform. So if let me drop that down. So I'm going to drop that down to 25 hertz and adjust my time scale. So I, I've changed nothing about it except the frequency, right? 25 hertz, you can see right there. But if I change it to DC coupling, it will uh, it won't filter out the DC. So this is beginning. To, it's a low enough frequency that this is starting to uh, behave like a steady state DC offset. So I change that to DC. Now it's not filtering out the DC component of the signal and it's all nice and flat. So now if I decrease that, decrease that even further to 2.5, let's uh, get this. See, if I go to AC, you can see that the output is, is significantly distorted. So I just do a single capture of that and get rid of this. So now you can see there is just significant. Now we can see channel one, we are at AC coupling. So we're filtering out the DC and the result, since this is at 2.5 Hertz, it, it's actually filtering out the information we want. So if I change this back to DC and hit run again, just kidding. You can see that it doesn't filter out the DC. So this is just something to keep in mind with the uh, particular low frequency. Now, obviously, if I go back up to 250 hertz and adjust the time scale appropriately, everything's fine. So we can see we've got nice flat DC component to it. So I can even go to AC coupling and I don't get the same distortion. Even channel two, I'm on DC uh, because I want to show that DC offset. The only difference if I go to AC, AC coupling is that it filters out the DC, but then it's just identical to the input channel, and it really makes no difference. It, you know, it doesn't help me for this particular circuit. So that's just a little uh, trap for young players on uh, low frequency and AC coupling. All right, I hope you found this video helpful.